Hi, I'm Hazel, and this is everything you need to know about selling things with TradeSkillMaster. In the basic guide, which I've linked in the description, I walked you through creating a group, adding an item to it, adding a post operation, and posting. This video assumes that you know all of that, so go catch up now if you need to. In this video, we're going to get into the nitty gritty of selling. I'll talk about more price sources, different types of groups, cancel scans, reset scans, and quick posting. All of this is going to help you create and tweak your own auctioning operations. A quick note before we start is that you can import the settings of someone else's operation if they give you a string, much like importing a weak aura. Like weak auras, only do this if you trust the source. I think it's still important to understand how to set and tweak your own prices, so we're going to get into that now. Price sources. The big strength of TSM is that it can price your items by a set of variables and rules, instead of you having to decide on each price individually. Exactly what those rules are is up to you. Keep in mind that when TSM posts an item, it's always going to try to undercut what's already up on the auction house. All we're doing here is setting a ceiling and floor for how drastic we'll allow the price to go, and picking a normal price to post at when there are none up for sale. Price sources are the building blocks of your min, max, and normal price rolls found at the bottom of the post tab in an auctioning operation. Right now, my min price is dictated by a percentage of the vendor price of that item. My normal and max prices are based off the market price. Those are only two of a big list of variables you can use in your prices. For more, type slash TSM sources and it'll print a nice list to your chat box. Price sources aren't case sensitive, but like a macro, they do need to be spelled perfectly, so having a reference is really nice. Throwing in spaces where they don't belong will give you an invalid price error, so double check. While you can use a flat gold amount for your price source, I don't recommend using one on its own because that greatly limits what you can put in that group. If High Mountain Salmon are selling for twice what you can get for Storm Rays, you don't want to be posting both for 12 gold. You probably don't want to be doing that anyways, because the market evolves and prices change all the time. What you choose for your price sources is going to depend on whether you want your prices for that group to be aggressive or careful. High demand consumables and crafting mats tend to sell really quickly, so you can be pretty careful with your price rolls for those. As long as the price is fair, they'll sell, so you want to get what they're worth. If somebody undercuts you by a lot on some herbs, they'll probably get bought out fast enough that yours will still sell before your auction expires. Call it stick to your guns pricing. For low demand items with high deposits such as BOE green gear, I like aggressive prices. These use a low minimum with sources like vendor sell, destroy, or mat price for crafted goods. You don't want to sell them at a loss, but it's okay to be below market as long as it sells. Every time you have to relist, you're out your deposit, so moving inventory is key. On that note, you can set max expires so that if an item's just not selling after a few tries, you can give up and vendor it. I recommend starting with one auctioning operation set up as aggressive, and a second one set up as careful. Those will get you started, and you can use them as a template for when you're making more specific auctioning ops for each group of items. Now that we've got a feel for pricing styles and some examples of how to use sources, let's get even more specific. You can mix and match price sources in a couple of ways using basic mathematical modifiers. My favorite is using a percentage of a source by writing out X% percent source name. An example is 110% DV market, which is 10% above market value. You can combine two price sources together with a simple addition or subtraction symbol. For example, you could have vendor sell plus five gold or vendor sell plus mat price. An asterisk will add a multiplier while a forward slash will divide. An example of that is a max price for a crafted gear piece could be DV market plus mat price times three. If you want to get even fancier with custom prices, I recommend visiting TradeSkill Master's page on them, which I've linked underneath this video. For average users, setting up your prices as a percentage of market price with DB Market will do you just fine. If all of this price talk is intimidating you out of wanting to try, just remember that you only have to set things up once. After you've picked your prices for one or two types of selling, you're good. In the intro video, we were selling stuff with one big mega group. That's fine to learn with, but we're growing up now, so it's time for more specific groups. You'll want these set up for mailing and shopping anyways, so now's as good a time as any. The golden idea here is to group things together that you want to sell by the same rules. You can make your groups as specific or vague as you like. The important thing is that the auctioning op you pick for each group matches the type of stuff in it. Having specialized groups for different categories of items lets you price things tighter. Once you've added an item to a group, it's in that group until you delete it, and items cannot belong to more than one group at a time. You can import groups from other users just like with operations to save some of the legwork of adding items. Let's go over some examples of groups that you could use. Personally, I like to put all BOE green gear in one group. 
I use my aggressive operation to move the items without paying the listing fee too many times. You could also split your BOEs into more groups. You could have raid BOEs, transmog, and then low demand as different groups with their own auctioning operations. If you like to sell materials such as cloth or in fish, you may want to create your own group with special selling rules for those. I use my careful pricing here. Make sure your auctioning op for these has a high stack size. People like to buy huge stacks of crafting mats and singles are a definite no-no. Crafted products like food, flasks, and enchants can be their own groups each. You can use mat price as part of your minimum price to make sure you're not selling items below what they cost you. I like smaller stacks for food, flasks, and pots because they're expensive so people tend to commit to less. Enchants should always be sold in single stacks because who needs two neck enchants at once? Nobody. To set different stack sizes for these different groups, they'll each need their own auctioning operation. If you wanted to sell food and enchants by careful price rules, you'll want a separate operation for each to handle the different stack sizes. Let's make careful sell 20 stack for food and careful sell single stack for enchants. We've already figured out our careful price rules, so instead of starting from scratch, you can flip to the relationships tab on your new operation. In this section, you can set your operation to copy the settings of another one. Scroll down to min, max, and normal price on the right and set them to match careful sell. Go back to your post settings, adjust your stack size to 20, and you're ready to sell some food. Do it again, but with a stack size set to one, and you'll have a nice auctioning op for your enchants group. Under any new group, don't forget to go to the Operations tab to choose which auctioning op you want to use for items in that group. If you have the TSM crafting module installed, you can actually auto-create groups with everything your professions can make right from the profession window. Click TSM on your profession UI to show the TSM version, then tab to Groups and click Create Profession Groups at the bottom left. Bam! You got yourself some groups. Pick out an auctioning op and you're ready to start selling what you craft. If you want to sell battle pets, I definitely make them their own group and auctioning operation. You want these posting one at a time and as close to normal market prices as you can get. Deposits are very low on battle pets, so you can keep reposting them for almost nothing. How aggressively you price your pets depends a lot on your patience. It's also pretty common to set up a group each for bags and mounts. If you're overwhelmed, remember you don't have to get into selling everything. Only set up groups and auctioning ops for the things that you want to sell. Cancel scams. This is where you start to make your gold and lose your mind. In the auctioning operation interface, there's a cancel tab you should look at. If enabled, you can run cancel scans to check your active auctions of this group to see if there's a better price your item could be. The first thing that'll trigger this is if you get undercut, but not all the way down to your minimum price. You run the scan, cancel the things that you got undercut on, and then repost them to undercut your undercutter. This is the way of the auction house. The other thing that can trigger a cancel is cancelling to repost higher. If the auction you were undercutting ended, this will cancel it so that you can repost it at a higher price. This can scrape you some extra gold, but I would rank it as a lot less important than cancelling to undercut. How often and obsessively you run cancel scans is up to you and your mental health. Reset scans. Let's say you go to the auction house one fine morning to sell some juicy briarthorn when you notice that they're all below one silver each, tanking your precious market. How dare they? Time for a reset scan. This is where you buy out all of an item when it's below a threshold, so you can post it all yourself at whatever price your post scan would have done. You are resetting the market. To set it up, open up your post operation and tab over to reset. You'll need to set the max quantity that you're willing to buy and how much you're willing to have on hand after you finish resetting. Under max reset cost, set the total gold amount that you're willing to invest on resetting a market. For min reset profit, set the amount that you would have to make off each item for it to be worth resetting to you. You can use the fancy price sources or you can just use a gold amount. Price resolution is the size range of prices that are considered a single price point for the reset scan. The default one silver is generally just fine. Max cost per item is the most you'll pay for a single item when resetting. I personally keep this set to half of market price so that I'm only resetting really low markets and never investing in full price items. That's just me though, you gotta follow your heart. Reset scans are good in markets with small supply like vanilla crafting mats and battle pets. Quick post from bags. This is the ultimate selling shortcut for when you've got stuff in your bags to sell, but it's not in groups, you haven't set up post ops, and you're too lazy to sort all that out right now. It'll post the item at what shakes out to be an average of a few price sources, such as market price. Hit the button, make sure the prices look somewhat all right, and knock yourself out. This will post every ungrouped item from your bags it can, so don't run that if you don't want to sell your stuff. You can find the quick post button on the right hand side of the auctioning tab when you're at an auctioneer. 
So say you run your post scan and posted everything you can, but there's still a bunch of stuff in your bags. Why won't it sell your stuff? If an item is in a group and has an auctioning operation but still isn't posting, your chat log will tell you why. Usually it means that your minimum price kicked in and that item isn't worth enough on the auction house right now. When that happens, you can hang on to it and hope the price goes back up, you could try to reset the market, or you can give up and vendor it. If it says you have an invalid price, then you need to look at the price sources for that auctioning op and double check your spelling. So that's everything I know about setting up your auction house empire by selling things with TSM. Thanks for watching! There's a few more guides still to come on mailing, shopping, and crafting with TSM, so keep an eye on my channel for those. To learn more detailed info about TSM, visit their website at tradeskillmaster.com. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye!